Welcome to another edition of Modern Retro Review and if you're watching this video on the day it's released then happy Halloween and because it's Halloween I'm going to be celebrating it sort of by playing a spooky game or a creepy game it's not especially scary but it's got a kind of a creepy theme to it and this game is called Tenebra and it's available as a free digital download from itch.io although you can also pay to download it if you wish to you can gift the author of the game a uh, some money if you want to let me just go on to this next screen here. Uh, here you can see the itch.io URL there. So if you want to find out more information about the game, then go to that. And this game, I'm playing it on the BBC Micro, but it's available for a whole range of retro 8 and 16-bit computers, including the Amstrad, Spectrum, MSX, Amiga, Atari ST, several other 8-bit computers, I think, as well. And also it's been ported to the NES. And it uh, was originally released for the Commodore 64 in 2022 this version for the bbc micro was developed in 2023 and there's also a sequel available and that's available for the c64 and a couple of other 8-bit systems at the moment and i imagine it will get ported to all the same systems that this version's on so that's the introduction to the game i think you pronounce it tenebra or tenebra i'm not entirely sure not sure what it means either i could have looked it up before i started this video but I didn't. So as you can see from this basic title screen you can use cursor keys to enter a code to access later levels uh, I'm not going to do that I'm going to start with level 1 so I'm going to press S to skip and here you go you've got the overview of level 1 you've got to get to the gate and you can only walk in the lit area so this is where it's got a spooky sort of a theme to it I should also mention the controls uh, it's keyboard only as befits the BBC Micro but it's cursor keys or QP sorry op q and a uh, and space which is uh, more traditionally known as the spectrum default keys q a o p and space bbc micro would typically be zx and the colon and the slash but we'll let the developer off i guess the bbc wasn't the first system he was uh, developing it for so you know whatever anyway so you can also use the cursor keys as i say and you don't need to move around especially quickly so either option is fine uh, so yeah let's get into the first level anyway which starts nice and simply uh, so yeah, as I was saying, the spooky theme for this is basically that your character, who is the little stick man I'm moving around at the moment, is scared of the dark, so you can't go into the dark areas. Uh, so it's kind of a puzzle maze game, kind of roguelike graphically in terms of its very small single character sprites representing everything, and it's done in black and white uh, to give it that sort of spooky ambiance as well. So the idea of the game on each level is it's a single screen, and you've got to get to the exit which in this case is really easy to do and there you go that's the end of the first level obviously this is going to get more difficult as things progress and i'm now on to level two where it tells you that you have to pick up torches so let's get into it so here again i can't go anywhere other than the area that's lit up so i've got to pick up the torch in the middle there and now nicely done you can move around and you've got a nice sort of circle uh, of light to pr uh, protect your character effectively so that he's not scared uh, from what I've played of this, there's no monsters or anything like that in it. So as I said, it's not a particularly scary horror theme game. The only scariness is that your character is scared of the dark. But it kind of suits a Halloween theme, doesn't it? There we go, that's the end of level 2. Again, pretty easy so far. It now tells you that you can squeeze through cracks in the walls if you're not holding a torch. So let's see, where am I now? Top right there. So again, pick up the torch and I can move around doesn't always cast a glow of the same size so that's going to play come into play at various points in the game no doubt uh, so I can go through this gap here but only if I haven't got a torch so I'll pick this one up now and again I'm probably gonna have to do the same yet yeah, sure enough so it's introducing the concepts of the game one at a time in a nice simple sort of tutorial way uh, as I've just mentioned the light radii can be different so here we're probably gonna see them with different uh, radii or radiuses if you prefer uh, so again I've got to get to the exit that's the only aim of each level so I guess this one here is going to be smaller yeah it's only casting a very small amount of light around so that's not going to be good enough I'm guessing to get to the exit yeah if I went through there I'll do it I can't get any further than that as I've already demonstrated so I'll go and pick this one up, which I'm guessing casts a nice big radius. Yep. And oh, that's interesting. I still can't get to the exit though. So, hmm. 
Ooh, okay. I, I think I get what's going on here. So, this is where you have to start being a little clever with the objects. So you m move into this space with this one. So you probably need two. Can I get that one up there? Would that help? Not really. Um, okay, yeah. So if I leave... No. Leave that one there for now. Leave this one up here. Right, there we go. Now that one exposes the uh, the door to the light and the little one allows me to go through the door and into the exit. So on we go and it's now introducing doors and as you can see doors need keys so let's have a quick look. So there's a door there somewhere there's going to be a key for that door so I'm going to pick up this torch and find the key. Very simple game in terms of the graphics and sound you've got some noises for footsteps and picking items up and things like that and going through the doors uh, graphics just single color uh, black and white okay so you can go through the doors with uh, with the torch that's fine uh, single color black and white to uh, sprites very simple graphics as I said sort of roguelike in the, the look you've, there's a bit of animation on the torches to show that they're burning uh, okay, so the door's there and the keys are there. This is probably going to involve some wandering. Okay, yeah, I get it. So all I've got to do is go and get that key. Now I've got to track all the way back, which is a bit annoying because I think the key is... The door is right there, I'm not sure. Uh, let's go back around anyway. So yeah, it's a it's a puzzle maze game. It's not. Oh, there's another key there. Interesting. What does this mean then? So I can get through there. Oh no, that's a key. Up. Okay, yeah, that's I, I missed. Didn't mention that at the bottom there. There's three little dashes, and they are the items that you're picking up. So I've got a torch. I had a key, which is now gone again. And uh, yeah, and now I can go through the exit. So yeah, all good. Uh, bottom right as well. Closed gate can be opened by lighting up its sensor. Okay, so another thing's being introduced here. Uh, but at the bottom right, you can see a code. That's the code for the level. So if you're getting to a point where you're stuck or you need to restart at a later time, you can write that code down or take a photo of it. You probably more likely do now or a screenshot if you're in an emulator. Uh, and you can um, you can then restart at that point later on. Uh, so walking into this space here, that. If you look at the door on the right hand side, currently closed, when I go into this area with this little activator switch thing, it switches it on. So this is another one where you're going to have to be sort of swapping the torches over. So I'm going to pick this one up here. And then that allows me to take it over to there. And then pick this one up. Back to there. And then that should allow me to exit the level unless there's something in the way and there is but it's just one of those cracks which I can walk through and there we go and on to another level so you get the idea other concepts are introduced as the game progresses so what I'm going to do is play through a few more levels and then when I get to something new I will restart the recording so you can see a few other things I'll probably play through I think there's 30 odd levels in the game I won't play through to the end I, I got to about level 18 when I've played through before uh, so I might get that sort of far and then play a couple of levels I've not played before and then call it a day but you've already seen what the game has to offer really it's just more of the same with more interesting puzzles and things as the game progresses i've worked my way through to level 11 and this introduces a new hazard there's been a couple of other things introduced in the previous levels that i've skipped uh, this one's got unstable doorways which collapse after you pass under them so basically uh, you've got to make sure when you go through them that you don't need to then go back through them otherwise you're in trouble so there's one of them there, so you can see I can't go back there, so I'm just going to make my way through here. This is actually fairly straightforward, I think, this level, just to introduce uh, this concept. Got to go and get that key there. And then work my way around. Presumably the door's not going to be... Oh, that's interesting. It says something at the top there. Finsterness? I don't know what that means. Uh, what have we got here? another one I can't get through there at the moment so I've got to go and find another torch and move that torch closer to the exit door I suspect yeah there's nothing going on down there so 
but yeah this is another one where you've got to pick up the torch and move it closer and get it into the right place let's assume that's as close as I can get it is it or maybe if I just so here on the side of caution hopefully if I put this here so that it lights up all that doorway then once I get around with the one I've got here then I'll be able to get through the door I would presume that won't be a problem there we go pretty easy that one on to the next one and it doesn't introduce anything new but again you've got the collapsing door on the left hand side here and a door with a key in so clearly what I'm going to have to do here is work my way round through the collapsing door pick up a key to get back in and in the meantime I've got to find something to open that door as well which will be one of those triggers which we saw in one of the earlier stages another thing that was introduced when I wasn't recording is that you can pick up or walk into oil spills which increase the radius of your torch and you can see at the moment my torch is very small it's got quite a small radius so and there's one of them actually just below me there it looks a little bit like an eye that's one of the pools of oil so I'm going to need to go and get that I imagine I'm just having a quick look around what else there is not a lot else at this point so let's go through here you can go through those doors with the torch so that's good uh, so yeah as you'll see in a second there you go that increases the radius of the torch which is obviously going to come in useful I can use this one to get back out again and now I can see there we go okay so there's the key and just need to pick the torch up again go back round here pretty straightforward again through the door oh no hang on I'm not I'm not done yet I haven't activated the uh, oh it's there okay well there we go that, that's easy enough leave that there that's activated the switch to open the door and I can now go through the door okay so level 13 cold braziers can be lit up using torches so this is once again introducing another gameplay mechanic uh, it, it is quite interesting that we're now 13 levels in and it's still introducing new things in a sort of tutorial style uh, so yeah I'll carry on working my way through but you saw me there lighting up one of the uh, empty little pots of what not fire but it's now got fire in and there's another one and I can see another one down there so can I go through there no because I haven't got the torch then have I stupid uh, yeah so I'll get, I'm guessing I've got to work my way around lighting these and otherwise it's going to be fairly straightforward yeah so you can see a pathway to the door being made there going back through these cracks which I can't take the torch through so I'm going to need to light another one up because somewhere there's going to be one to light up the uh, switch to, oh there it is, the switch to um, keep the door open and there's another one, well, yeah so there, that's quite straightforward now, I'll just light that up there leave the torch there, make my way through these cracks and there we go okay lit braziers can be pushed on rails I think this is the last sort of mechanic that it introduces certainly the last one I've seen up to the levels I've played so now you can push these braziers along these rails and the other thing that comes up I think a little bit later on well I know is that sometimes the rails have to be repaired so you have to uh, find hammers to repair them but uh, okay so I need a I need a torch from somewhere sorry not a torch a key I need a key from somewhere because I need a key to get through that door so it's going to be in one of these isn't it oh hang on um, oh no I've already got the key I must have picked that up at the beginning ah oh, I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing so this is this is actually really easy I literally just got to go through there oh okay yeah uh, not quite as easy as I thought but not far off just got to light up the inside of that room right as well and there we go and it's more of the same so I'm going to skip on a few more levels now uh, it gets a little bit more complicated with moving the braziers around these rails uh, and things like that but I'm going to move on to a, a few later uh, a few levels later get my words out uh, to level 18 which is the last one that I tried playing uh, when I was trying to play through it before so I'm going to move to level 18 and then 
uh, see what goes on from there. Play a couple of levels I've not played before and then probably wrap things up because I think we've seen pretty much all the game has to offer. Uh, but it's worth seeing a couple more of the puzzles uh, and me trying to work them out on screen uh, on the video uh, when I've not actually worked them out in the past. As promised, I'm now on level 18 and I've not played this one before, so let's see what happens. I've not completed this one before at least. Uh, but there is a hammer here, and I mentioned the hammer recently, uh, just saying that it's used to repair the track, so you'll see that uh, in effect in a moment. So up here I've got the uh, brazier that I'm pushing along, and somewhere along here I'm going to come to, oh yeah, there we go, a crack in the track. So I can't push the brazier any further. All you have to do is walk into the uh, little cracks and repair them, and jobs are good. Un. So let's see what uh, awaits me on this side. So we've got another, let's just go through there. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, I've gone through a uh, gate there that I can't get back through. So let's hope that's not going to uh, cause me problems. And I think it is. Oh no, maybe not because there's the uh, oil pool. That's made everything a bit easier to see. And yeah, now I can probably get back through there. Yeah, I can, there we go. Get through there and get the key. And the key will let me through this door here. So that solves that problem, although I'm not really sure there's much of a problem to solve there. Maybe I needed... Oh yeah, of course, I needed the oil thing to make the torch beam wider. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to use that on that one because it's already at the widest point. Uh, so what I need to do now is get this torch here, I imagine. And do the same with this one so that I've got two nice wide uh, torch radiuses. And then I've got to get myself... Uh, yeah, I see. I'm not sure. Um, I, I clearly, I've got to get back to light up the little button, uh, the switch that uh, um, sets the uh, gate open. So I'm guessing what I've got to do is use these things to get myself along the top edge, uh, back along the rails. And let's just leave that. Okay. Let's leave that there for now. Move this back. Okay, so that's lit that up again. Open the door. I can see the door, and I can see. Hmm, interesting. Okay, it's all about the positioning of this thing along the top. I suspect that's the furthest it can go without switching the, the door off. So must be there and then I put this along here all I've got to do is somehow create myself a, a, a channel of light across the top edge the other side of the wall I'm on now to be able to get myself to where the door is so it's close but it's not quite right uh, but I can probably leave that there that'll allow me to go through there I'm gonna have to go back and move these ones below the wall into the right place so probably that one there and then maybe I can put that one there will that do the job no oh okay so I need to put probably the one in the middle move it over a space perhaps let's see it still seems to be lit up for the most part bit of trial and error involved here yeah that looks good now oh no I've got <laughs> I've now got a gap a bit further along, so maybe I now have to go back down and move this one along one. Oh no, that's not going to work. Move this on this way a bit. No, that's... Yeah, lots of trial and error on this stage. Maybe this will do it. Well, it will because I can leave that there now uh, and I can make my way all the way back across. And the door is open and I can go through. Well, that was a bit more tricky, as you'd expect. Uh, the further you get through the game, the more tricky the puzzles become. So I'll play through one more stage and then wrap it up. I don't think I have much more to say about the game. The graphics are very simple, but they do the job. The sounds are pretty simple as well. Again, they do the job. Um, it's not designed to be a game that's heavy on the clever graphics or anything like that. It's all about the gameplay, and the gameplay is pretty cool, I would say. Uh, it's a challenging puzzle game with lots of different uh, things, environmental things that you have to interact with. Um, it's easy to play because you're not 
having to deal with anything like monsters or anything like that that means you're gonna lose lives so it's a very casual game you can play it at whatever pace you like you can save your position by writing down or recording a password as well yeah I don't know what I'm doing here at the moment uh, so yeah all in all pretty nice little game I've got no real complaints about it if you've got any thoughts about it then let me know in the comments uh, if you've played it on any version um, whether it's the I've really got no idea what I'm doing here at the moment. Uh, whether it's the BBC Micro version or one of the other many home computer versions, I do think it's really cool. I know what I've got to do. Uh, I've got to go through here, haven't I? Um, I think it's really cool that they've ported the game to lots of different systems. That's a nice thing for the developer to have done. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to play through this last stage and that will wrap it up. But, um, yeah, this one's quite tough. Clearly I'm going to need that hammer. Uh, yeah, I haven't quite worked out what I'm doing yet exactly, but I guess now I've got the hammer I can repair the tracks up here, which will then allow me to move the uh, brazier thing around a little bit further as well. So that probably helps. Here we go. I think this will allow me to then hopefully access the key on the right hand side here once I've pushed that across. It has, but I've left my torch behind, so now I need to go back and get my torch. That's probably a little bit annoying, but obviously that's how the game's designed is that you've got to keep uh, moving your torches around to make sure that the area you need to go into is illuminated and then you can also get back to another area um, so yeah that takes a bit of getting to grips with and I haven't done a fab job of that all the way through this video but there you go okay now I can get the key that's that bit done what's next uh, yeah you can't drop the torches on the tracks I've discovered that in this level uh, so back this way should allow me to yeah, get the key the keys unlock the door um, so now oh yeah okay I need to light that up so I'm going to have to do some moving around again maybe I light that up with this side maybe okay right got it where am I trying to get to ultimately okay so I'm going to have to move the uh, brazier back along the tracks to this side to allow me to um, switch on the button that opens the door. There we go, that's that done. Now back through here. And yeah, that'll do it through the crack. And through that one and there we go and there we go I'm on to level 20 and that's where I'm going to leave this video as I said if you've got any thoughts about it leave me a comment also go to the itch.io page to download the game if you want to give it a try and support the author if you enjoy it and if you're watching this video on Halloween then let me know what you're doing for Halloween are you taking your kids out trick or treating are you playing some scary games or watching a scary movie let me know and if you're not watching this on Halloween then well all that was a bit pointless wasn't it so thanks very much for watching this video and until the next time See ya.